The first and eighth visions of Zechariah are the bookend prophecies enveloping the entire series of visions. There are similarities between the two visions, but also significant differences. Both have horses of varying colour. In vision one, a rider and no chariots are mentioned. In vision eight, chariots and no riders are mentioned. In fact, when you study these eight visions closely, you realise they appear to be grouped into four paired visions. The sixth and seventh visions seem to be paired, bringing hope for the removal of sin from Judah. Visions four and five were encouragement to the high priest and civil leader to continue their difficult work together. Visions two and three showed that powerful forces opposed Judah. Their position seemed hopeless. But God planned to destroy all enemy empires and a glorious future awaited the people of promise. Let's get to the final vision, vision 8 of Zechariah, starting at chapter 6, verse 1. Then I turned and raised my eyes and looked, and behold, four chariots were coming from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of bronze. We've now arrived at the last of eight exhausting visions for Zechariah in one night. Remember, these were waking visions, not dreams, while he slept. Zechariah sees four chariots travelling towards him from between two mountains. We can't know for certain what two mountains Zechariah saw. Hebrews 12 speaks of Sinai and Zion, and these would seem strong contenders. Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal stand as reminders of the blessings and cursings of the law. And the well of Shechem between them refreshingly reminds how God himself fulfilled his law and poured out his grace. Some have speculated the mountains were Sinai and Horeb. I myself imagine them to be Mount Zion and the Mount of Olives, with the Kidron Valley between them, the capital of Judah, where Zechariah lived. Bronze in the Bible is often idiomatic for judgment. I've heard it speculated, the colour bronze, suggestive of a dawning of a new day after the long night of visions, with the gold rays of the sun capping the two prominent mounts of Jerusalem. Verse 2. With the first chariot were red horses. Notice the plural. With the second chariot, black horses. So many commentators have made so much of the different coloured horses. Unfortunately, because the angel doesn't explain the meaning of the different colours, I can't interpret their meaning for you with any confidence. There are similarities with these horses and the four horsemen of the apocalypse from Revelation 6. For example, there are four different colours. Three colours match exactly. The fourth you could match if you squint your eyes just enough. But there are more clear differences than similarities. They come in different colour order. They have different job descriptions. The fourth pale green colour simply is not grey dappled, no matter how much you squint. There's no mention of horsemen in this vision and no mention of chariots in the Revelation 6 account. Plus, this reference is clearly talking about multiple horses of the same colour, and Revelation 6 speaks only of one horse of each colour. I think these differences confirm beyond reasonable doubt no direct connection with the Revelation 6 for horsemen of the apocalypse. Verse 3. With the third chariot, white horses. With the fourth chariot, dappled horses. Strong steeds. Chariots are symbols of war and power. They speak of magnificence and glory, a sense of invincibility. Chariots were a force multiplier. They gave an army speed, protection, venom. They instilled fear in the opposition. They were the ultimate weapon of war in the days of Israel and Judah. It seems until the time of the kings, Israel had limited, if not zero access 
to war chariot technology. Whenever Israel confronted an overwhelming enemy force of chariots, it required the direct intervention of God, supernatural heavenly power to defeat the enemy forces. Chariots speak symbolically of judgment. With these chariots coming from bronze mountains, we get a judgment setting. So when we see this vision of heavenly chariots with heavenly steeds called specifically strong steeds, and although no angelic rider is mentioned, it's more or less implied. When you put these things together, it's clear Zechariah saw four mighty heavenly chariots unstoppable by any earthly force. Some commentators relate these four chariots to Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome. This is a poor interpretation of this vision. The chariots simply don't speak of those four kingdoms. They speak of angelic dispensed judgment. Then I answered and said to the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? Luckily we have Zachariah there as our earthly spokesman asking the important questions. If the chariots did speak of Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome, the angel would have either told us so or answered in such a way so as to leave the four nations as a possibility for others to join the dots. But the angel answers emphatically in such a fashion so as to exclude the four Gentile nations as a valid interpretation. Verse 5. And the angel answered and said to me, These are four spirits of heaven who go out from their station before the Lord of all the earth. These are not four nations. They're the four spirits of heaven. In Hebrew, and excuse my terrible Hebrew, there should be a good sound at the end, but in Hebrew, they are the four ruah, meaning the wind, the breath, the mind, the spirit of heaven. Given the context, it would seem they're four angelic powers. Their station was before the Lord of all the earth. These are four mighty judging angels who came from between bronze mountains, who've been ever present before the Lord. They proceed with the power of the Lord. They're the executors of his will. They proceed with the spirit of the Lord. They proceed into all the earth. They cannot be stopped. They cannot be sidetracked. They cannot be defeated. They travel in the will of God. They accomplish their mission with the speed of God. They will fulfill their mission from God. Dorm of the black horses is going into the north country. The white are going after them. And the dappled are going toward the south country. The four spirits ride the chariots and horses heading north and south from Jerusalem. This is why I believe the two bronze mountains are the Mount of Olives and Mount Zion. The geography best fits this explanation. From ancient times, Israel was the roadway that connected Africa with Europe and Mesopotamia. Israel's enemies came from the north and south, even the ones that came from the far east and west. And this is the reason only two compass points are mentioned. This is historically accurate. To Israel's immediate east was desert and west, the great Mediterranean Sea. So the four spirits of heaven head north and south, departing Jerusalem. Interestingly, the red horse is not mentioned. Did it head north or south or stay in Jerusalem? It's very strange that the red horse's activities are not mentioned. Perhaps this spirit had a secret mission not revealed in the pages of Scripture. Then the strong steeds went out, eager to go, that they might go to and fro throughout the earth. And he said, go walk to and fro throughout the earth. So they walked to and fro throughout the earth. In verse 7, we see the north-south direction are expanded on once they depart from the land of promise. The strong steeds and mighty spirits went out throughout the entire earth. The furthest extent north and south, but also east and west, is implied by the statement throughout the earth, emphasised by their three times use, as underlined on screen. It's likely these four spirits have been given dominion to command and judge different regions of the earth. And he called to me and spoke to me, saying, See, those who go toward the north country have given rest to my spirit in the north country. A quick report comes back from the black and white horses, north directed. I think this is best understood by the events of the history of Zechariah's time. You see, God 
had sent Babylon to judge Judah. But Babylon went too far with their judgment. Babylon took too much glee in their dispensing of God's judgment. And God's spirit was greatly grieved at the wickedness of Babylon. Babylon was God's judging horn, but Babylon needed judgment due to their overstepping of the mark. So God sent me to Persia to be Babylon's craftsman, the metalsmith to dispense judgment on the Babylonian horn. The immediate report came back from the black and white charioteers. The horn of Babylon is defeated. Babylon is no more. The Persian metalsmiths have accomplished their task. God's spirit, notice the capital M, my spirit can rest easy. God's wrath is satisfied in regards to Babylon. But no other reports are recorded. I believe these spirits work are ongoing. And reports continue to flood into heaven central. Their work of judgment and reporting only completed. Once we reach the day when the saints from every nation are going to lose gravitation, as an old gospel song writes. Or maybe they'll continue till the sheep and goats are divided. Or maybe till the final rebellion of the millennium is completed. Until our next study, may God richly bless you.